welcome to the NPTEL online certification course. The title of this course is Digital Control in Switch Mode Power Converter and FPGA Based Prototyping. I am Dr. Shantanu Kapat, an Associate Professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Kharagpur. So in this course, uh, particularly in this lecture, we want to show some examples of digital control application in power electronics industries. Then I want to emphasize why there is a growing trend in digital control uh, in power electronics industry. Then what are the challenges in commercial digital control product and then what are the what is the need for architecture exploration and skill manpower development and finally what are the objectives and overview of this course. So the digital control trends in power electronics industry. So some of the example I am showing one is like you know for low voltage high current application particularly for cloud servers and you know everything now like you know in the age of internet we talk about cloud computing. So if you talk about cloud server then this cloud server power supply requirement the voltage can be 1.8 volt or below but the current can go like it can be hundreds of ampere even it can be beyond 1000 ampere. For such application the digital control play a significant role. And in this one example, I am showing the Renaissance digital power uh, uh, product. I mean, these are the for data center application. The another example I am showing the ST microelectronics uh, solution for the server, where it is the complete server uh, starting from the AC input and then AC to DC, then DC to DC. And nowadays, there is a growing trend for 48 volt to direct conversion. So that means there are 48 volt, it is the Google uh, server standard. And then either you can we need to go for single stage 48 volt to POL or multiphase or it can be you know two stage architecture and there have been lot of research going on in this area. But if you look at majority of the product they are coming in digital power solution. Another example is the Texas instrument and this particular example I am showing uh, where this UCD3138 this IC this IC can be used for isolated DC DC various type of isolated DC DC converter that means or even it can support various uh, you know multiple converters. So this one IC can be programmed and it can be configured to accommodate various topologies. Another example I am showing there is the infinite digital power for LED driving application. So if you go for let us say street LED driving or LED TV then it start from AC and then DC and because the LED is a DC load. So if you take this infinite digital power solution and it there can be a power factor character followed by LLC and other type of architecture for LED driving. So these are the few examples of a large uh, you know amount of digital power solution in power electronics industry and slowly most of the industries are going for digital control. Now where is the where, where there is a growing trend for digital control? One of the reason is that using digital control we can make the design flexible that means as I said in the previous example the one IC can be used for various topologies that means we can program this IC through software and we can change the parameter we can configure it so that it can be used for other architecture or even it can be used for various power levels. Then this design uh, in this course we will be talking about hardware descriptive language Verilog HDL based uh, you know design and the programming where this design are portable it can be mapped to various process technology or even and a digital control can be you know different type of microcontrollers are available. So this design should be flexible and they are reconfigurable that means the controller can be reconfigured for achieving very light load efficiency at the same time high performance under nominal load condition. Then digital control and communication because now we talk about PM bus where there is a pro this is a protocol where multiple converter can interact by clock as that and the data so that we can make the power supply reliable fault tolerant and the whole network can be smart because they can communicate. Then one of the example I am showing that if you take one digital control IC that IC can be configured its parameter can be configured. So, this IC even the commercial ASIC uh, IC that IC can be programmed through external software that means we need to have that means there is a increasing trends of hardware software and firmware integration. 
So this is for ASIC solution and if you go for modular uh, microcontroller based solution then you have that hardware software as well as the firmware integration and that will use that can be used to optimize the you know from a power converter you can optimize from the very switch level to the whole converter level that means for example for gate drive we can make a smart gate drive or intelligent gate drive to make it more efficient we can even reduce the effect of EMI and at the same time overall converter efficiency can be improved you know overall from light load to high load over a wide range of input voltage or even there are multiple converter for example in onboard charger you have PFC and LLC and there may be other architecture and it can be bidirectional such kind of converters actually frequently the digital control solutions are used where you can interface the third party solution that means the power stage can be one uh, you know uh, one company then the digital controller can be other company so it can be plug and play. We can achieve high efficiency that means as I said that we can improve the very light load efficiency that means we want to achieve the flat efficiency curve over a wide range of load current and then we are also trying to reduce the component because everything else is integrated in the ASIC solution or can be in the microcontroller itself. Then we can actually implement various advanced control because in the later of this course I will show you some commercial product where the digital platform can be used to implement non-linear as well as linear control combination. So in the large signal if you it can be configured to non-linear control where it can achieve more or less fastest transient like a time optimal response and then under steady state there are scope for you know parameter optimization there are scope for uh, frequency modulation as well as the ripple minimization and light load efficiency improvement. So all these features can be incorporated using digital control. Then there are different levels of digital control product one can be digital power management IC where the controller ADC switches all are integrated in a single IC for low power application and only off chip will be inductor and capacitor. So such application can actually uh, you know reduce the size of the space because your controller component I mean unless unlike in analog control where we generally have off chip capacitor resistance so that can be integrated inside the digital controller so it can be made more high power density solution. Similarly, digital control IC for example, if you go for high current application where there are multiple phases and there are scalable phases. So each phase has this hub bridge switch cell as well as the driver integrated. So it is a smart phase and each of these phase has their own current sensing arrangement, driver optimization arrangement and there is a centralized digital controller which interface among multiple phases and it control the multi phase overall control in such a way it can reduce the ripple, it can improve the transient response and you can do phase sharing operation and to improve the light load efficiency and so on. Similarly, if you go for digital control system solution like a plug and play for example, if you take onboard charger where you can have PFC, LLC, so whole converter can be controlled to one digital controller. So it can be plug and play and such digital controller card can be used to improve the overall efficiency you know to take care about the soft start uh, protection circuit what shopping so many features can be incorporated and finally the digital control can reduce the technology development as well as the product development time so it can reduce the time to market so as a result it can gives an edge to the industry to come up with the new product in a shorter time so here i am showing an example of a buck converter in this course we will have back and boost converter hardware extensive case study and we are going to use this test setup test setup where you know uh, in this particular setup this is our power stage architecture and here on here is a board to board connector it is a signal conditioning board and just below this board there is another board it is just uh, you know below this board I will expand this board in the next lecture where you we are using an FPGA card. So I am just showing one example that you can use here this con this power stage is configured in such a way we can use both as a buck as well as boost converter. So I will be showing multiple uh, experimental case study using this setup where we will implement digital controller using an FPGA. But what are the challenges in digital control because 
digital control will come with also some additional cost and there are challenges how to deal and how to compete with these analog counterparts. So one of the primary aspect is the cost because we are using A to D converter, we are using D to A converter, not all digital control require DAC. So we need to uh, understand thoroughly different architecture and we need to optimize the number of ADC and DAC so that they can because we can reduce the cost. Again, for a given ADC, we need to be careful about the selection of bit size, the selection of sampling rate because we try to reduce delay as well as we want to reduce the hardware architecture size and the power consumption so that you can reduce the silicon size. Then we need to also reduce the computational time. So all this computational time, bit size, sampling rate, they comes with an additional that controller and that may incur cost. So there will be a challenge how to optimize the cost and there are opportunity for cost optimization. Then the level of digitization. So the digital control we can let us consider if we take a pure analog control. For example, if we take a pure voltage mode control or a current mode control, we all know about the current mode control that is a two loop control and in the current mode control, if you keep both inductor current loop as well as the voltage loop in analog domain as it is like a traditional analog current mode control. Then we can start with the basic housekeeping that means we want to program the reference voltage because we need to change the reference voltage uh, in order to meet certain DVS application dynamic voltage scaling application where the reference voltage should be adapted based on the processor task requirement. So such provision of programming a reference voltage is can be done through a housekeeping arrangement. So this is a very low level of digital uh, you know utilization. Then we can go to digitizing the loop that means in current mode control we can start digitizing the voltage loop which may be slower compared to the current loop but we still keep the current loop in analog. So this can be a part of mixed signal uh, implementation. Another implementation every all the loops can be fully digital. So in that case we will say fully digital architecture. So such various type of digitization various level of digitizations are possible and for each digitization methodology we need to adopt certain modulation technique that means whether it is a fixed frequency modulation whether it is a variable frequency modulation then for each modulation what will be the sampling uh, rate some sampling frequency should it be uniform sampling should we uh, synchronize the sampling rate with the clock should we use one sample per cycle or multi sample per cycle should we use even based sample or the uniform sampling so this aspect will be also they are challenging and it will be discussed thoroughly in this course. Then there are implementation platform that means if you take mixed signal architecture so some part analog some part digital. So there has to be some data conversion block to interface between analog and digital. So based on the implementation platform there are many digital control architectures. Another important very important factor is the power consumption because if you, if you consider an A to D converter and if you want to reduce the loop delay sometime we need to increase the sampling rate but the same ADC if you operate at a higher sampling rate it will consume more power. So your power consumption can increase so there is a trade off. Similarly if we want to achieve higher voltage resolution we may want to go for higher bit size but that may be counter productive in terms of the size of the architecture or even the power consumption and the propagation delay. So we have to be very careful about the selection and we will also see this bit selection also imposes a constraint in terms of due to ratio resolution. So we have to meet certain requirement minimum requirement to actually ensure some of the you know stability aspect and the performance aspect. Then under such a resource constraint that means we have a finite sampling rate and there will be some sampling delay because of the conversion time and computation time. So within keeping that delay in mind are we going to face some stability in, uh, issue and that we will see in the subsequent lecture and we will find there are significant impact of the sampling delay in the stability but we need to understand how to model that and how to ensure stability. And within that sampling delay what should be the criteria for design of an controller it should not be simply mapping of analog to digital because we will end up with some sort of nonlinear behavior and which may not be acceptable. So we need to understand 
modeling analysis and design methodology and the stability and performance in order to keep it the converter stable as well as we need to achieve certain acceptable performance. Finally, our design is in the mixed domain because some part in digital, some part is analog and in the digital domain in this course I will be showing very log hardware descriptive language based development. So, we will start developing the digital architecture of the controller starting from the gate level because we may not go to the switch level, but the gate level will talk about very log coding and this code while we will be prototyping using FPGA, one can try to go synthesize using ASIC solution. So, in this development by HDL base, we can also go for ASIC solution or even in this course, we will show some demonstration using microcontroller. So, one can also use you know microcontroller based implementation particularly for high power application also. So, why is this course? In this course, we are going to familiarize various digital control architecture keeping in mind that ultimately this will go to some sort of commercial product. So, we need to keep in mind we may end up with very complex control, control algorithm that can be very high fi mathematical formula, but this may not be acceptable from the product point of view because it should be simple, it should be robust and it should be area and the power efficient. Okay. So, keeping all this mind we need to understand what are the resource constant and what are the feasible and the acceptable solution from product point of view. Similarly, we want to understand some analysis and design tools. So, these things will be covered in this course. Then I will be talking about Verilog hardware descriptive language. I will give you almost 2 weeks introduction to HDL and fixed point implementation and how to implement a PID controller, digital PID controller and that part will be discussed. Then subsequently, I will be showing various prototyping step, how to prototype this HDL code in using FPGA and how to validate, how to demonstrate, uh, how to use a power converter and how to control it. And in this course, we will be extensively use, using uh, a Xilinx FPGA based hardware demonstration and there will be couple of microcontroller based digital control implementation video lectures and that will be demonstrated like a we will be using like STM32 as well as C2000 microcontroller and the design expert from ST Microelectronics as well as Texas Instrument, they will be demonstrating the implementation using microcontroller and how to implement digital control with power converter case studies. In this course, we will be also demonstrating MATLAB customize, how to develop customized model using MATLAB simulation, simulating. Then we will develop different simulating architecture for different controller and then we want to validate although this validation may not be the part of exam, but this validation will show some optional lecture that validation how to validate your uh, MATLAB model with your mathematical model. And finally, we want this course is aimed to develop skin band power to understand the digital control architecture and, and also to develop indigenous. IP that means intellectual property. So, this course is a 12 week course and we will first discuss some level of digitization in closed loop switch mode power converters. We will also discuss various fixed frequency and modulation a variable frequency modulation technique and different sampling mechanism which will try to optimize the resources as well as to ensure stability. So, we will talk about modulation and sampling method in fixed frequency digital control as well as modulation and control technique for sampling technique for variable frequency digital control. For example, we will talk about constant on time control, constant off time control, then hysteresis control. Then we will also demonstrate custom MATLAB model development using MATLAB simulating and for different control architecture. Then I will also give you the overview of various modeling technique and what are their complexity and accuracy and finally, what modeling technique should be used to get uh, you know how what is the design flow and then ultimately how to validate it. And I will also show modeling of closed loop digital control and step response uh, and different step how to validate the model. And then I will also show how to design fixed frequency voltage mode and current mode control you know what are the technique what are the summary then I will also introduce in detail about the Verilog HDL and fixed point implementation. Then I will talk about Verilog based digital control implementation and FPGA based prototyping. 
then we will also provide a back and boost converter reference design all the details and we will also demonstrate hardware implementation with different implementation case study. And finally, multiple hardware demonstration will be carried out using a PGA device and also some selective digital control case studies will be shown using STM32 and C2003 microcontroller. And finally, I will show using a PGA uh, how to implement multi-mode digital control so that you can increase the light load efficiency as well as high load performance and some aspect of future challenges. So that is it for today. Thank you very much.